Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the latest edition of the Hunter County Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Haig, and with me today is perhaps one of the most recognizable figures in the history of, Hunt, of Hoboken sports, I, and, and Hudson County a little bit, but more Hoboken than anybody else. He was the longtime basketball coach of the boys' basketball team at Hoboken, but he got his rise to prominence and more of his recognition as being the highly successful baseball coach at Hoboken High School, and then later in life, he became the athletic director at St. Anthony, and it's my good friend, Buddy Matthews. Buddy, how are you doing today? Very good, Jim. How's everything with you? you know, I hope everything's good with the coronavirus situation with you and your family. Yeah, we're doing okay. And both of us have, yeah, we, we both have a family of one. Um, you know, you got Janice and I got Mary. So it's like, the, you know, although you have an extended family too, you got sisters. So, but uh, I have, and I had a sister too. I don't know what the hell I'm just babbling now, but you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and then my other family is in Flushing, and they're not playing, and who knows when we'll see baseball again. And uh, but that's a, that's a thing we could talk about at the end of this, uh, at the end of our uh, talk. So anyway, um, you have you were born in Hoboken, and you've never left. Is that correct? Yes, we still live in Hoboken. Uh, we right, right now, Janice and I are down at Shaw because Hoboken's too congested. We live in an apartment building in Hoboken, and we don't want to be in uh, the elevator or walking around with too too close proximity to people. So we're down at Shaw. But uh, no, and what we, town is this Shaw house in? It's in Normandy Beach. Normandy Beach. Okay. Yeah. So which uh, is where my father came in on a boat in uh, in on. Uh, on uh, the on D Day, uh, back in 1944, he came in in Normandy Beach. It's not. Um, oh, it's not the same place. No, we're a little bit. We're in the United States. Oh, I'm sorry. I I thought I thought I thought that it was in France, like where my father came in. So, no, my father was you know was part of the first. I guess I guess he was the second wave of soldiers that came in wow. when he came in in, Norm in Normandy, and yes, obviously he survived. So, yeah. all right, so let's so born and raised in Hoboken. Um, where did, what where, what uh, whereabouts did you where, you know did you live for most of your life, and where did you grow up? I lived uptown, I lived at Bloomfield Street, and uh, our recreation was a, a park on Tenth Tenth and Hudson Street. We played there every day. And then in the winter, I went to the Hoboken YMCA, and um, I was I, I was a member of the YMCA from about nine years old to thirty years old. At thirty, at, at, later on in life, I was uh, uh, I ran basketball leagues there and summer programs. So I was uh, really really attached to the Hoboken YMCA, and the legendary Mike Grinelli nurtured me to become the. the to help me become the person the person I am today. Wow. Okay. All right. So um, obviously, sports was a major part of your life, and you played all kinds of sports. You know, you name it, you played it. Um, I played yeah, ba baseball and basketball mostly. I didn't play football. Um, I was even in the streets. Oh, in the streets. Oh, yeah. You always played in the streets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I'm saying you played foot. Did you play football in the streets too, or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah a potentially part. Yeah. Okay. But, I, was, uh, um, I, I, I broke the record for getting cut in, in high school from all the sports. <laughs> uh, but but uh, in every every league that I was in, age wise, little league, Babe Ruth league, you know, and uh, rec you know, recreation leagues, I uh, I fared pretty well. But uh, I couldn't I couldn't get it. And actually, it was a blessing in disguise because when I did get cut in high school, I went to the YMCA and had uh, played on tremendous teams and, and, and had a great time. All right, why do you why do you think you got cut, buddy? Back then, first of all, let's talk a little bit about your youth sports. Did you play, you played uh, organized basketball and, and and little league baseball? Did you play those sports? Yes, I played uh, organized baseball in the uh, YMCA and little league baseball. We won in little league baseball. We won the. Uh, 1966 and 1967 North Championship, and then we lost the we lost the finals, but we won two championships and in Little League. In Little League, yeah. So wow, wow, so you beat West New York? No, no, no. In our in our in our city. Oh, in, in the our, city division. Okay, yeah. all right. We, you know, 
about something funny. We we almost played West New York. We uh, Mike Alonso was uh, was a legendary umpire, but uh, and I met him a lot and I respect him a lot because of what they accomplished going to the Little League World Series. Sure. But, um, uh, we uh, we played in Oboken. I pitched. We won three two on a, a game winning home run by a good friend of mine, Nicky Calabrese. And um, then we went up to uh, North Street Park, and we lost six nothing. And if we would have won, I would have pitched against the uh, uh, West New York. The, and, uh, the West New York All Star team that went to the uh, College Lily yeah, World I Series. Alonso, yeah, and all those guys. Bruce yeah. Sabatini was on that. He was on that team. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, Jack Wilson was on that team too. That was a good. Uh, uh, a lot of guys that were on that team. They, they, you know, they, uh, uh, they. That was a, a good, good baseball team. There's no question. And they put oh, wow. little league. They put little league. Uh, put little league baseball on the map uh, in in Hudson, in Hudson yeah. County. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It would have been nice getting getting slaughtered by them, but it was, you know, but it, I mean, because there was no way we would be. You know, they were they were phenomenal. But it was it was a nice run. And the, at the YMCA, we we had uh, Grinelli ran some phenomenal leagues. We uh, we had leagues from nine until uh, uh, to sixteen year olds, and then later on we had uh, adult leagues. I ran adult leagues. I mean, I, it it was. Um, YMCA, you're, now you're talking basketball, right? Basketball, okay. Yeah. Ba baseball, did you play anything after Little League? Did you play, like, I say, a Babe Ruth League or a Pony League or anything like that? Yeah, the Babe Ruth League, I got on, uh, I was I was cut from OLG. Uh, that's a little, that's the team that we had. Our school had a team, so I was cut from there. I went to, uh, as I went to a brand new team, GT4 covering, and we had, and we had a couple of wins. I, I was, I was, uh, Within one out from uh, pitching a no hitter, and, and I lost the no hitter. So, uh, and then I later on, I was in high school with the kid, and I complained about it. And he says I was the one who got the hit. That wow. Was yeah, yeah. So, and then uh, GT floor covering uh, disbanded, and then I went to Fast and Fuels, and we won. We we won a championship in my 14 year old year. And in Babe Ruth. In Babe Ruth, yeah. okay. and we lost the championship my 15-year-old year. Uh, Bobby Macaquana was uh, was the he was the big pitcher on on those teams. Okay. You know, did you ever did you ever ask yourself or did you ever ask say any of the coaches in Hoboken why you were never selected uh, to play um, either JV or varsity at Hoboken High? Uh, you know, I, I was I was always bigger, heavier, slower, but I knew how to play. But I was always bigger. Well, heavier. you were left so, left handed, and you could pitch. That was, that, I mean, that would be right away. You put you on the team, lefties that could pitch. You know, back in the uh, you know, in, you know, in the I, early seventies. I didn't pitch much after Lowell League, you know. I oh, mean, really? I, okay. I, you know, because we had we had really good pitchers on that Bay Ruth team, um, and uh, no, I really, I really didn't pitch much after for whatever reason. Uh, but we, had, I know the reason. We had very good pitchers, Billy Thompson and. Bobby Macquano, and then and then we played. Uh, I didn't play. I played my senior year in high school. I cut, cut as a junior. I played the senior year, and uh, and oh, you know, varsity. You played varsity. Yeah, varsity yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. And who was the baseball coach at Oak High then? Joe Tataro. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> and so then and then we went to uh, to uh, BBBs, what, and, which was uh, a great league. God Almighty, was that a great yeah, league? Especially in the early seventies, man. Wow. Uh, we uh, we we did all right in seventy one, seventy two. We did better seventy three when we uh, won the BBB championship. Did you really? Wow. Okay. And that's when that league was extremely competitive. I mean, wow. You know, it was, uh, Mike Mike McCormick was was a pitcher there. He 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 uh, he, he went on to pitch for um, Detroit. You're talking about Frank McCormick. Frank McCormick. Okay. Yeah. Frank, then, uh, Frank McCormick, who I had a chance to talk to on a regular basis and talked about in his first major league game with the Tigers, he struck out Hank Aaron. Wow. Imagine that? Yeah. Imagine that? And he talked about, like, you know, he had the long hair, was flopping around, and, you know, like he was being really cocky, and then all of a sudden he looked over, and albeit Hank Aaron was 41 years old to play for the Milwaukee Brewers, but he said, oh, my God, it's Hank Aaron. And he... Bared down and threw him a fastball, and sure enough, Frank Aaron struck out. So, 
Wow, that, that's a great story. Yeah. All right, but but the 4B league back then was about as good as he got, right? I mean, that was a great, great baseball league. It was, it was. In the 74, we lost the cha- we lost the semifinals. One, uh, one, uh, uh, probably Matt Kalana was a pitcher then, too, and he said, just get me two runs, and I'll win the game. We lost one nothing. Wow. We lost to uh, West New York. West New York went on to play. Unfortunately, West New York went on to play North Bergen, and that's when... Um, Steve uh, Baum. No, that's Steve, well, Steve Baum, but uh, that's when the, uh, the catcher got... Uh, got oh, that's out. right. Ralphie Marino got hurt. Ralphie Marino got paralyzed. So you were in that game? Huh? You? No, we would have won our game. He wouldn't have been paralyzed because, oh. uh, we, you know, that play wouldn't have happened. But, oh, you know, my God. Did you yeah. see? Did you see that play happen live or no? No, I, I didn't go that game. No, oh, okay. No. Boy, that must have been terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. He was a great. He was a great player, but Rafi Marino has a player. Yes, he was. Yeah, yes, you know. he was. You know, it was just one of those things, though. You know, just one of those things. Right? Yeah, no. And those and that league had some great catchers. Great catchers. Louis Camposano played played for, uh, I guess, the Jersey City Red Sox, and Gary Rabbit played for um, uh, for another one in that league. I mean, there were you know. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, Bay- I'm trying to think who might have caught for Bayonne back then, but they were they were some great great catchers in that 4B league, and that was that was great baseball, and that took you through the entire summer, right? You got to play about 30 yeah. games, right, in the yeah. summer. Yep, yep. Okay. And, and you know what? And back then, and like I I do I have I have like 12 scrapbooks of all the, everything I you know all the coaching I've done, and and even my mother saved a lot of stuff that when I when I was playing little league and stuff like that. I mean, in, 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 when we were in, we were in, uh, we were playing BBBs. They had everybody's batting average, and they would put it on. And uh, Mike Spina would put it in the paper. And, and I mean, they, they, uh, the um, we were. I was uh, I, at one point. I was leading the league in RBIs. Wow. They had. Uh, I know for a fact that they used to put the box scores. The Hudson Dispatch used to put the box scores of all the four B games in the paper. Every single one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they they were at every game. Mike Spina was at all, and Wayne Wachowski, they they they, they were all at all our games. So yeah, was, you know, was, and you know, it was it was it was it was great just to see it in the paper. And like I said, they did have the averages maybe maybe once every couple of weeks. They did have the averages, the RBIs. They did have that in the newspaper. Right. It's a ama- that's a really amazing when you think about it. So, yeah. all right. So you left. The, you, you graduated from Hoboken High, and you went to St. Peter's. And was there any thought at all of you playing at St. Peter's, or you just wanted to be a student? Uh, no, I, I never just wanted to be a student. So okay, uh, you know, so uh, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't try out my freshman year. I tried out my sophomore year, which was 1994. 1994, 1974, 1974. Please, God, let's not get out of control. Yeah. I know you want to shave 20 years off your life, but let's not do it that easily. <laughs> So it was 74, and that was right after the 74 BBB season. Okay. And, uh, and you know, I was, I mean, I, you know, like you said, it was a season that lasted a long time. So it, it, it ended in late August, and then now we had tryouts in the, in September, and I was, I was in, I was in tremendous shape at that point. I was still heavy and fat and slow, but I was in tremendous shape. And, uh, and I, uh, I, I made the team. So oh, wow. The team. Who, was the, who was the baseball coach at St. Peter's then? Ben Brent Carter was the baseball coach. Wow, okay. Teacher and uh, gym teacher in uh, Union City Heights, uh, Union City. Uh. Okay. So uh, I made the team. I played there. I played uh, my sophomore year, junior year. And, uh, of course, in my life, uh, I got cut in the, before my senior year in the middle of a practice. So uh, You got cut? Wait a minute. Time out. You got cut in the middle of a practice. I okay. thought it was a practice. Okay, practice. explain explain uh, this it now. Might have, it might have been a, a tryout, but I was on a team for two years. There. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, I guess it was a tryout for me, and I got cut in the middle of the practice. All right, what and how did and was Broncado the guy who cut you? Yeah. And how did he say it to you? you know, okay, get off the field. I mean, how how does that is one okay. how does one cut somebody that's been on the team for two years in the middle of a tryout or a practice? How did that happen? Behind the batting cage, and he said, "He said, uh, uh, buddy, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to let you go." And 
We, Were you we, stunned? Uh, well, mm, not not totally. Okay. Because he really wasn't playing me, you know. He really wasn't playing me a lot the year before and stuff like that. And and uh, even though I was the, the the best first baseman on our team, but I actually the year before, if I if I got a hit my first at bat, um, he would pitch run for me. Oh <laughs> jeez. So that was a sign. I think I think he wanted me to quit, but I'm not a quitter. Yeah. So, so the next year I came back anyway, and uh, and in the middle of a practice, a friend of mine, Phil Mercurio, was the center fielder, and he's uh, I mean he's a, a very good player, and he's a and he's a, a very assertive person. So he comes running over to me and says, "Where are you going?" I said, "I'm cut." And he says, "I'm gonna." I said, "Phil, don't get him." Don't, I, 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 this was happening. This was gonna. This was going to happen. I mean, you know what? If you cut somebody, why don't you do a call them or call them to the side? How about after practice? Before, after, well, not in the middle. You know? Not in the middle. It's embarrassing. <laughs> you know what though? Like, all those cuts, all the times that all this stuff happened, um, it it made me a better coach. Okay. Wow. It, 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 it Explain made, that, buddy. How, how did it be make you a better coach? Well, that I treated my players a different way than I was treated. Okay. So, and uh, because I know how it felt to to be cut, I know how it felt, you know, I, I, I know how it felt that a coach not liking you and you shouldn't show it. And so I was able to, and I think being, this, this helped me be a successful coach. I was able to communicate with my players. Okay. And if I if I cut somebody, I took them in my I, I, I did it off the field. I, I, I didn't even do it the day of. But I did it the next day in school. Okay. I sat down with them the next day in school. You know, you know, growing up, you know, in high school when I got cut from baseball as a junior. They used to put in the, the names. Right. They put the names on a piece of paper and tape it and to the bulletin board. And running over there, and, and, they, and, you, and everybody looks at me, what, you got cut? You know, Joey, you got cut. You yeah. Got cut. You know, that, was, that wasn't the way I was going to do it. You know, I was going to do it. I was going to show them respect. And you know what? You know, um, I think I did, I think I did a, a, you know, that's that was that was the way that it would, taught me how to treat people. To make sure that I didn't treat them the way they treated me. Okay, that's that's a good uh, good philosophy to have there. There's no and question. It, it was another time when, when when I did get cut in high school. It was the first time my my junior year was the first year I never played organized baseball at all because, because I got cut. Okay, and, and, and my mother worked in Hoboken High as a secretary, and Joe Tataro was a vice principal in the uh, in, in in another school. And I said to it, Ma, you know. Uh, she gotta say something. You know, I'm, 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 I'm I, I shouldn't have been cut. I'm way better. And uh, my mother said no. Um, you know, but this is this is this is a part of life. But didn't you play? Didn't you play four B though? I played. I didn't play four B until uh, I graduated at 17 years old. So I didn't play four B until my senior year. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but so, wasn't didn't four B uh, was it at that time 16 to 18? Yeah, 16 yeah. to 18. Yeah. So actually, I did play later on that summer at Fort B, and then I played two years after that. Yeah, I played right. 70, 73, 74. But that wasn't the same. You know, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. It just wasn't the same. Okay. You know, being playing high school ball. So you know, I and then and, and then when I went home after I got cut from you know St. St. Peter's, my mother said, "I wish I could buy you a team." <laughs> and then she said, "But I can't." So you know, it's uh, in fact. Here's another lesson. Little League. I was, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was the best player on our team. I was the pitcher. I was, I, I won, I won those championship games as a pitcher. Although we had a great team, you know. But uh, and one day I was sitting home and just hanging out. My mother said, "Don't you have practice today?" And uh, I said, "Yeah, but I'm, I'm the best player on our team. I don't have to go." And she you said, made that decision upon yourself. Yeah. Wow. I, I only, I only did it once. My mother said, get up, get out, and get to practice. 
Wow. And she said, and you better get to practice. And I showed up late. And that was the last time I ever thought I was uh, the best player on the team. So There you go. Now, um, growing up as a kid, you were raised solely by your mother. It was it was it, did you have a, did your father yeah, was he no, in the my, my father owned a candy and liquor store right around the corner from where we lived. So he was in there all day long. You know, he was you know he he, he couldn't go to games. He couldn't because he he had to work. And he okay. Had people, you know, and and I have uh, five siblings, so you know he had, to, he had to really work to take care of six kids. Wow, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So your mother was the one that did most of the discipline. And, yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now you graduate from St. Peter's. Um, what year? 75? Um, 76. 76. Okay. At that point, buddy, did you know you wanted to be a teacher? Was that the goal? Or what was the goal coming out of college? What did you want to do? The goal uh, was to meet the right person at the right time. Uh, that wasn't a goal, but that's what happened. My junior year, uh, a professor, J uh, James Jacobson. Jim Jacobson, who was Grinelli's, one of Grinelli's best friends. Yeah. Yes, and he was, you know, he, he, he knew our family. He lived around, his family lived around the corner from our family and stuff. So we were very, very close throughout my time there. Then finally, as a junior, he said, hey, buddy, you're, you're a junior by now, right? I said, yeah. He said, what's your major? And I said, I don't have a major. You didn't have a major by the time you were junior in college? Yeah. Oh, so my God. Said, what were you just taking? Regular classes? I'm, you you didn't even know? I up space and time. That's oh, okay. Funny. Yeah. So uh, he grabbed my arm, and he said, you're going to be a teacher. And um, I I listened to him because I had nothing else to do, so I listened to him. And, and that's when I, you know, and I was like, yeah, I was just going through the motions, but then... You know, and then when I became a teacher, it became, you know, uh, I really got serious about it because, uh, you know, I'm, right now I'm looking through. So you were an education major? Uh, I, yeah, I was an uh, English major and uh, secondary education. Uh, no, yeah, English and secondary education. Yeah, I was okay. an education major. Yeah. Okay. So, so thanks to Jake, Jake is the reason why you tormented all of us for the last uh, 45 years. Is that the correct Jake, is the, Jake is the ultimate reason why I became a teacher and then a coach. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. So right away, did you get, uh, after uh, you decided that you got, um, you wanted to become a teacher and uh, you got your certification, did you get hired right away in Hoboken or did you have to work your way up the ranks a little? I, uh I had a major. I didn't graduate in '76. I graduated in like December of '76. You know, so I graduated. I had to do it in one extra term, okay. extra semester, and then this, that's so that from January to June, I was a substitute teacher, and then I was hired in '77. Right away. Wow. Yeah. And what were you teaching? Were you teaching uh, history or? Um... Well, and, and, uh, I started out as a uh, in. Joseph F. Grant Middle School, so I was, um, and they they were they hired compensatory ed teachers. They hired teachers that taught kids that needed help in English and math, and uh, so I so I was doing that for the first couple of years. Okay, all right. And did uh, and was coaching something that you aspired to? Was that something you you wanted to do? Yes, coaching was uh, something I always wanted to do. In the YMCA, Grinelli had me as a 10-year-old coaching 7- and 8-year-olds. Wow, okay. So uh, uh, coaching was, you know, was, was you know, wasn't in the front burner because, you know, I was still in my, you know, early 20s and I was still looking to play ball. But, you know, coaching was something that was definitely in, on, in the back burner until, you know, I – well, actually, I – um, and after after two years, seventy nine, I went to uh, grammar school, and I started a basketball team in the grammar school, and, and and we had it was called Connor School, and you know, and uh, Grinelli was there, and Joe Palamo was there, so they were my mentors there. Okay. And we start. I started this team, and we we, we and from seventy nine to eighty seven, we were you know we had we had, we had eighth grade grammar school teams and. Unbelievable league, you know. It was uh, incredible. You wow! Know, was, uh, so you were the, you were the eighth grade grammar school basketball coach for eight years. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 
Um, talk a little bit about, you once told me in, in, in many of our many conversations over the last 35 years, you once told me that uh, you knew that you were, you were destined to be a coach because you were the one that organized the pickup games in the, in the park and you were the one to pick sides. It wasn't like you, you put, you were the one who said, okay, you're on this team and you're on that team and you're on this team and you're on that team. So you had a, like a, uh, an eye for talent. Um, was that the way it also happened a little bit that you, you know, that you knew you were going to become a coach because of your background organizing pickup games in your neighborhood? My friend said after I became a coach, my friend said, I knew you were going to be a coach, uh, you know, but, but you see, you, you needed some organization, so, uh, and uh, here's, here's, here's the story which, 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 which helps with that. Uh, my, my friends would always call for me in the morning. Okay. And, and uh, you know, and my mother was, you know, like, you know, flabbergasted by how many people, because, you know, when they call for you, it's like, if, if you're going to play baseball, or basketball, you know, there's usually five or six or seven or eight people calling for you. I, I didn't like waking up. I used to, in the early in the morning on weekends because I used to play Stratomatic baseball until like about two or three in the morning. Oh my God! Okay. So so I didn't like to wake up. But yeah, I mean, I'd love I'd love to have waked up, but I, my Stratomatic baseball game was was number one. So. Now, uh, and who were you playing Stratomatic baseball with till three well, o'clock in the morning? The first, the first, the first team I, the first uh, year I got was the '69 team, so the Yankees stunk then. So then I got the '71 teams. Then finally I got. But who'd you play against? Uh, the Yankees. Well, uh, the Yankees. See, I had to, I had to get another team because the Yankees couldn't beat anybody. Oh, so you were Even playing you, against Yankees yourself? Against everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, I always played against myself. Yeah. Okay. All right. In fact, it kept me out of trouble. All my friends were drinking in in grammar school. Not all. Some of my friends were drinking in eighth grade and ninth grade and ten. And I was playing Stratomatic baseball. Well, at least your mother knew where you were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she oh, she definitely knew where it was. Yeah. So so all my friends would call for me. Now I, at the dinner table, the, this one night, um, my uh, mother said to my father, he said. So Dave, you know, do you know how popular your son is? Do you realize how popular your son is? Yes, he has a half a dozen kids calling for him every every weekend. And uh, so my father turns to me and says, uh, "Yeah, but why is why is everybody calling for you?" And I and I I was eating, and while I'm eating, I pick my head up and said, "Because I got the bat and ball." Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, so I had the bat and ball because he, you know, he he let me have what I what I needed. Okay. Know? So, and I had the wiffle ball bat, and I had and I had the wiffle ball, and we used to tape the wiffle ball up. I cut the top of the bat off. Right. News newspaper shoved newspaper in there. Made it heavier. Right. And, and, and I and I taped the top of the bat back on with my father. Thanks to my father. I could have done this without being able to get that stuff for my for free. My father's store. Right. And 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 we played with the ball with gloves. Yo, was, really, huh? Was the ball was taped? That the the bat was stuffed. So I mean, you know, so you have to wear a glove to play. And and it was you know a serious game up 10th Street Park. Okay. In fact, my friend and my a friend and I would would go to Yankee Stadium and that day, which the bat lasted for one lowly game. But right. It was it was helmet day, and we wear our helmets too. And when we play, you know, and 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 hat day and everything, we wear that stuff. But you know, in fact, you know, like I think. And you always you always imagined yourself to be Mickey Mantle, of course, right? Switch hitter. Oh, see? My, yeah. my sister was a tomboy who they, they, uh, the boys would never let her play. My sister was uh, six, five years older than me, and, and, the, and I used to watch her try to play. They never let her play because she was a girl. Okay. Number one, and number two, because she was better than them. Oh, yeah, see, I can't have so, that happen. So, you know, and I, I, you know, I was five years old watching, and, and this one game, not, not they're playing punch ball around the four corners, and they needed a guy, they needed a person, they, they needed more person. So Diane said, what about me? What about me? And then they took her, but on one condition, she had to do it lefty. She had to punch the ball lefty. Yep. Why? Because, because they didn't want, they didn't want... Oh, they didn't want her showing them up. Showing them uh, up. Yeah. Okay. And, 
and she still hit the ball better than them lefty. Unbelievable. Uh, that's how tremendous she was. You okay. Know? So I, but to explain to first of all, most importantly, before we go any further, how did you get the nickname of Buddy? My mother gave it to me. Her, her brother, her, I, I, you know, my mother gave me. Her brother was named Buster. Buster, and I guess they must have called him Buddy. And uh, he he was he was a tremendous athlete. He was uh, he was you know he was he. He he had diaries, and he didn't want anybody to read his diary. And you figure, you know, most people just lock the book up or something like that. He he wrote his diary in Latin. Oh, you're kidding! So nobody would read his diary. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, so he and that's your uncle. He, uh, yeah, it was my. But I, you know, he 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 died at 21 years old. He uh, my uh, my mother was 10. He he was visiting a pen pal in a in a lake. He was going. He had to go over a, a lake. I don't know a big lake. He had to go from one end to the other, and a, and, he, and he went in the canoe, and the canoe capsized. And instead of instead of you know hanging on into the canoe, he he tried to swim back, and uh, it was very cold. The water was very cold, and he and he died. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So explain to everybody else too that never heard this story. Who was one of your childhood friends that became very famous? In terms of. In terms of an actor. An actor. No, oh, Joey Pantoliano wasn't one of your friends. No, no, no. no I no, thought he was. No. I thought. All right, I take it back. I, I thought that you know. I thought Joey Pants was one of your friends and. And because he was so small and was able to crawl um, into the sewer and, cl and climb up to the roof and go get the balls back, uh, that's why they let him play. That wasn't one, He wasn't one of your players. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I, I'm sure I'm older than him. I'm almost positive I'm older than him. Okay. But also, he lived downtown Hoboken. Hoboken is a mile square. Right. Uh, uptown people hardly ever went past the middle of Hoboken and downtown people. In fact, downtown, my father had one of the most popular liquor and candy stores in the city. No one from downtown knew anything about my father's store. Really? And there was some, and there was some great, there were some great stores down, you know, down in uh, downtown, and I didn't know anything about them. We just, it just didn't intertwine, you know? Wow. And, we, 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 I went down there to play some basketball, you know, and they came up to play in the YMCA basketball, but, and, and we played a little bit in, in 4th Street Park there, but, uh, we basically stayed on in our area and then downtown people. So Joe Pantliano, uh, Pantliano was downtown and I, I hardly ever I knew, knew him. Okay. Sports, either, so. All right. Well, I take that back. And so it means to tell me that the only restaurant that you were able to go to growing up was Helmer's, and you never went to, like, say, uh, anything that was, like, say, on 2nd Street, like uh, the Brass Rail and uh, uh, what's that, and Office? You never went to those places growing up? You had to just stay to Helmer's? Uh, Arthur's was the Hoboken house then. But uh, the, f the first time I went to Leo's, I was uh, 18 years old. Wow! I was I was legally I was legally able to drink, so that's the first time I went to Leo's. So. Oh my gosh! Okay. Yeah. See, I think I was I think I was younger than eighteen when I went to Leo's. So. Yeah. All right. So now, again, without question, now that I think of it, I went to Leo's when I was in high school with Jackie Cullinan and Greg Herenda. See, so uh, I now I I know for and Jack Maroney. So I'm uh, I definitely was under under uh, under eighteen by that yeah. point. Okay, nice. Yeah, all right. So anyway, all right, so now um, you're teaching a, a, in the Hoboken school system. What was the first sport you coached, and, uh, and what, 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 you know, in what capacity did you serve at? Um, I got a phone call from James Ronga, common soul, the brother who was right. in the in, uh, in 86. I got a phone call from him um, asking to uh, – if, if I wanted to coach JV, uh, act, uh, be, yeah, coach JV basketball. Okay. Be a coach. And because I've been caught that, you know, all those years I was coaching grammar school, so you must have heard that I was coaching. So, um. And Gene Sparta was the varsity coach then? Yeah, Gene Sparta was the varsity coach. Okay. So, uh, 
um, I was uh, I went down to see Grinelli, Mike Grinelli, before you know during the day, and uh, and uh, I told him what what they said, and he said ah, that's not bad, that's not bad. And uh, Carmine Ranga had just resigned from uh, baseball at that time. Okay, the '86 season. So um, uh, I said no, after the '85 season. I'm sorry. And so, who wanted that job? Yeah. You know, seriously, right? What was yeah, the what was the Hoboken baseball team's record in 1986? Had a very, very nice team. I don't know. Uh, oh, did they really? Yeah, there was. Uh, there was. This was the, uh, the the gentrification started in Hoboken, and Carmen decided he was going to do some work and make some a lot of money. You know, sheet rocking and stuff like that. Because now this is when condos started. Okay. All right. So um, uh, I went down to Grinelli. Uh, during the, we, we would meet during lunchtime and everything, and I told him that uh, I got the phone call, and he said, uh, you know, yeah, you want it? I said, nah, I'll see, I'll see. So uh, 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 he said, isn't the baseball job open? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, do you want that? I said, absolutely, I want the baseball job, you know. And he said, here's what you do. You go, when, when, when you, when you uh, meet James Ranga, tell him, yeah, I'll do uh, he because he needs you, buddy. You know he needs a coach. Tell him I'll coach the JV if if you if you consider me for the varsity baseball job. I would have done that if he didn't say it. Really? Wow. Okay. And, and he uh, and I said, "You sure?" And I was lucky enough. And I'm saying, "Are you sure?" He said, it, it, "It can't hurt, bud." It can't hurt, you know. Okay, so, and you had, and at that point, did you have any connections at all with the athletic department? Not really, just from coaching the eighth grade basketball team, right? None, none, no, none, nobody else, right? I had no connections to the high school. In fact, at that point, I was umpiring. I wasn't even umpiring in Hoboken. I was umpiring in Sea Caucus. Okay. Because you know I, mean? uh, I, 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 so I had no connections with Hoboken. You know, that, because Hobo, I don't whatever, whatever reason, you know, they don't. You know, but I, I, I coach. I, I umpire with Jeff Bittaker, who was was a it was a baby boot pitch. You know, yeah. Thing. So I umpired. And I, I was I, I had all the games in Sea Caucus all the time. So I just decided to stick with Sea Caucus. So now I. Uh, I, I worked up the nerve, you know, because, you know, telling people, you know, what what you want. So I worked up the nerve. Uh, I sat there with, I sat at the end of, at the end of the school day, I sat in with uh, James Ranga and the, then the principal, Mr. Buddha, Jill Buddha. Okay. And we talked and we talked. And um, at, at the end, I said, uh, all right, look, I'll take... I'll take the base basketball job if you if if you consider me if you back me I, you know back me for the for the uh, I'll take the basketball job if you back me for the baseball job and uh, you know they said we can't make any promises I said I, you know I, I really don't need a promise I just need I just need your backing so uh, and a few months later it was uh, the uh, the assistant coach from the year before applied. But he wasn't a teacher, so uh, Carmen's assistant coach wasn't a teacher. But no, no one knew back then that you know they, he couldn't have gotten it. Uh, Ruben Gonzalez applied, Bruce Radigan applied, and I applied. Okay. And um, I got it. Wow. Uh, so I ended up getting it because because of you know what um, I and I I last time I talked to Grinelli the other I said I said you're the reason why I became the and he he had forgotten that he told me. To, to make that deal. So, wow, that's see, that's a that's a story I never heard before. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, right. Impressive. So right. He was. I mean, after he'd be my mentor in in the YMCA, he was still my mentor. You know, years later when I when when, when we taught together. Yeah. Right. All right, so now uh, you become the head baseball coach at, at Oboken, and w did you know at that time? What was the what was on the horizon? Did you have any idea of you know like the younger well, kids growing up or you yeah, know what was the, what yeah, was the thought yeah. process? Kevin Stinson and I coached the Babe Ruth League All Stars in '86 and '87. Okay. So and that and that those All Stars were uh, in fact now by by the by the mid '80s I started umpiring too in Hoboken. Okay. And then, um, and so the '86 All Star team had. Uh, uh, Mark Tagliari, Carmen Terso. Okay. 
you know, I mean, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, Joey Anderson, uh, I mean, uh, Ralph Eusebio. So, uh, but the thing was, in 86, they were all little league kids at that time. No, 86, uh, they were in high school. Yeah? No, 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 I'm sorry. No. Uh, 86, they were freshmen. 86, they were freshmen. Because they, didn't they play on that ambassador's team? And that's after 86. That's the, the ambassador's team, when they when they were 13 years old, they all went to Russia. That was and, 87, they went to Russia. Yeah. Okay, so. so your, and your first team, those kids didn't play for your first team. Your first no, team no, had no, first Turtle team. Goodwin and Jose Concepcion, and that wasn't yeah, a bad team. It was, you know, I guess he must have won about 16 games, but, you know. Team. Yeah, I know. But I wasn't, I wasn't ready to, to, you know. The first year as a coach, I don't care how good you are, it's very, very difficult. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't coaching high school ball to begin with. But it, 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 there was an adjustment time that I mean, it, we had a nice team, but yep. it just, uh, but it didn't work out. Eighty-seven. All um, right, now, now, you said you were going for the job. And Bruce Radigan was one of the, the people who wanted the job. How difficult was it for you that he became your assistant? And was there, was there you know tension at all? Like because you're the one who beat him out for that position. No, what happened? I mean, in, in kind of school, Bruce is my assistant coach for basketball. Oh, okay. So you had a good relationship. Yeah, we we had a tremendous relationship. We knew each other way before we even started teaching. So, um, so uh, you know, uh, actually what happened was since Bruce and Ruben Gonzalez, you know, were, uh, they, for the first time ever, they they hired three coaches. There was always two coaches. There right. Was a, there was a head coach, and then the other coach was the JV and assistant coach. Well, this year, because, uh, I don't know, the influence of Ruben, Ruben's record was, you know, as a ball player person, you know, they uh, decided to hire all three of us. Okay. So, uh, and then when I sat down with both of them, I said, uh, I, uh, I, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to make a decision because I want you to make a decision. Who wants to be JV coach and who wants to be my assistant? And, uh, Ruben said, I'd like to be JV coach. Okay. And, and uh, Bruce said, "I'll be your assistant." And then, and then when I later on talked to Bruce, uh, you know, he said, nah, "I would rather have been the assistant. I, I want to be with the varsity. I'd rather be the assistant anyway. I don't want to be a JV coach." So I said, "So it, it, it worked out because because Ruben Ruben would have been a great um, varsity coach too, and Ruben really wanted it. And um, but he he rather would have been." I didn't know Ruben as well as I knew. Um, I, I got yeah, of, as time went on, I knew him very, very well. Uh, great man and everything. Right. But uh, I, um, he, he would rather have been JV coach because he wanted, he really wanted to be the the, uh, the head coach. But um, that didn't work out for him. Okay. So anyway, so now '86, you take over um, the varsity. You you say you were mediocre. You said you were 12 and 10. I thought you were a little bit more than that, but. Um, you got to see slowly but surely the the, the, the fruits of your of, of that program started to grow with that, that um, famous ambassadors team, which was very, very talented and had a bunch of kids that you ended up being stars for you on that nineteen ninety team that went to the state championship game. Um, uh, but that was that was the turning point of of Hoboken baseball. Is that uh, that ambassadors team and those ki those kids were all very talented players. I mean, one after another, they were all very good baseball players. And he, he was the key too, because we, kept, like I said, Kevin and I did the All Stars '86 and '87, and um, now '87, '88, '89, '87. Mark and uh, Carmen Terso. I mean, this is this is the turning point here. They they were in Hudson Catholic in '87. Oh, that's correct. Yeah, they that's went, true. They, they went to Hudson Catholic. They first went to Hudson Catholic, and then, right? And then you know, and Jason Jason Cassessa graduated, so he didn't come on the team until '88. But but um, '89. '89. Uh, as time, you know, after the '87 summer season, 
Kevin and I coached. I mean, he was a tremendous rec coach and everything. He ended up being, he ended up winning a county championship for St. Mary's in 1980 yeah. in Union City in basketball. But he was also the father's assistant coach at St. Mary's right. in the city. And, you know, so he was he was a tremendous uh, city coach and everything, a whole book city coach. So right after the right after the 87 season where, you know, uh, um, we we went to Puerto Rico with the uh, with the um, the, uh, the Babe Ruth team, team. Uh, with the Joe Reinhardt's team. We went to Puerto Rico with them in '87. Right. And then, um, you went with them on that trip? Yeah, to Puerto Rico, not yeah. to Russia. Yeah, to Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Yeah. That's that was the Sandy Koufax team. Sandy Koufax, yeah. 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 And uh, you know, after with the with my favorite Michael Purvis quote. When he told them they won the, the the regional championship or whatever it was in somewhere in Bergen County, and Reinhardt said, said to them, "All right, guys, we're going to Puerto Rico." And Purvis said, "Puerto Rico? Oh man, I gotta get me one of them Mexican hats." <laughs> Classic. They, they they played Brooklyn, and Brooklyn um, Brooklyn used to win every year, and until until. Uh, yes, uh, Until they uh, ran into somebody named Danny Ortiz, they they won every year. Yeah, established their uh, uh, their team, and uh, they brought their luggage to the game. Yep. Oh yeah. And um, uh, Joe was merciless when they did win, and they could take that luggage right back home with you and everything like that. Yeah. So, oh, he was he was yeah. relentless. At, at the end, at put the, it in the book. Yeah. At, at the end, at, at, he was uh, he was our number one fan too, and uh, it was you know it was, it was a great time. At the end of um, that that summer league, uh, Kevin Stinson said to me, mark, "Mark my words, Mark and Carmen are coming to Hoboken High this sophomore year." I said, "You're crazy," he says. Mark my words, because everybody, I mean, you know, every they, they they kept on winning and winning and winning together. Right. And they did transfer back to Hoboken after their freshman year. Right. Well, I think so, a, I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that Tagliari was also a, a football player, and he was the starting quarterback at Hudson as a freshman, and he got destroyed. I mean, he got banged up like you wouldn't believe, and I think that had a lot to do with his. Reason to transfer. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's because uh, you know, in uh, in ninety, we you know we would uh, ninety uh, the baseball, basketball, and football team all won state championships. Yeah. And the same thing happened in ninety two. All three teams won state championships. You know. It was a great. It was a great time for Hoboken, um, the city of Hoboken, in terms of. It was, it was getting the term of the city of champions because they, they won everything every year. And it was parades left and right. And it was, a, it was a lot of fun. And you started that reign where you were, you know, I don't even know how many county and state championships you won. I think, I think you won six state championships and nine county championships. Is that correct? You should know better than else. We won eight. County championships and, and five state championships, and we went to the state finals four times. So right. We, we, unfortunately, we lost all four times, but we went to the state finals four times. Right, but I was close. You know, You're very close. Yeah, very yeah, close. Yeah. And uh, nine, I'm going to say ninety was the first time when you ran into something called Sean Senior, which I don't think we anybody's ever seen anything like that again. Um, then ninety two uh, was wait, the next wait, one. Wait, wait, wait. In 19, okay, we ran to, uh, that's a negative for 90. The positive for 90 was we beat Elizabeth the game before. Absolutely. And they were the number one team in the country. It was the number one team in the country. Right. We beat them three to, three, three to, three one, and three nothing. Danny Ortez pitched. Uh, he picked three kids off first base. Absolutely. After you. And, and he hit a home run. And he hit a home run. <laughs> By the way, he's being inducted to the Hudson County Hall of Fame this year. Oh, he is? Yes, he is. Good to, yeah. That's good to know. He's well-deserved, and it was way after the fact. I don't know. I don't know who's in charge of that anymore, but I'm glad that Danny's getting in. He's well, 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 well deserved. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyway, uh, that started the, the run for you as the baseball coach where you won championship after championship, and uh, did you ever think 
that at that time that Hoboken would become uh, such a powerhouse in baseball. No, I mean you know that start with with the with the stars of tomorrow and everything else, Purvis, Mark, and everything. That was uh, that was I, you knew that was special. You know, in fact, um, in in um, ninety. We were we were four and one going into uh, going into a game against uh, uh, Paramus High School, and it was rainy and it was off. Oh, it was horrible, horrible day, and it was up there. It's on, you know on the dirt and everything, and it was a horrible day. And we lost. Um, it, it was it was like it, it, you know after school game, so game ends at six o'clock, and it's it's roar, it's everything. And, and we lost four three. They they end up scoring a run of like the bottom of the sixth to the bottom of the seventh inning, and we lost four three. And that made our record four and two. And now we're getting on the bus and everything. And you know, no one wanted to lose. No one, you know, and and, and this group wasn't uh, used to losing either. No. So so we get on the bus, and I, you know, I'm I'm saying something as the bus starts moving, and I said, look, look, you know. I, I gave an excuse for losing the game because of the weather and stuff like that and uh, and uh, and and Mark said Mark Tagliere he always sat in the front everyone everyone wanted to sit in the back when you you know you know the bus everybody tried to get you know the seniors always had a spot in the back that, that was it and then and then you know the kids who sat in the front had to sit in the front because they didn't because because they couldn't sit in the back Mark sat in the front after every game and Mark talked to me after. I did not know that. Yeah, our our record going into Sean Senior was twenty four and two. Wow. We won twenty games in a row, and um, we uh, beat Memorial twice, and now we play him in a state tournament, and and, uh, and we're the home team, so uh, so it, this is sectional tournament. No, it is the game going into the sectional tournament. Right, semifinals. Semifinals, and. Uh, and you know, Danny's Danny's got nothing, and, and we uh, blow we blow a uh, three or four run lead, and now and now it's the bottom of the seventh, and uh, you know we're just we're, you know we're sucking wind now because we already beat him twice. How, how many teams ever beat Memorial three times? I never, know. never. I know. So and that that's a Memorial team that was two years be, uh, removed from winning the national championship. They were 29 and 1 in 88. They won they won it all. They won the they won the group fourth state championship that year and they won the the mythical national championship. They were 29 and 1. They lost to only one game all year and that was their regular season game to Bayonne. Leading up to that uh, leading up to that game, um, they beat us twice. Uh, we we had the lead two different times, and, and we were only five a five hundred team, but it was eighty eight, and that was with Mark Carmen and everybody, and and we were beating them six nothing up there the year that they won the national championship. We were beating them six nothing. Carmen sprains his ankle going for a pop up while he's pitching. I put another pitcher in. We um, it was the fifth inning. We we're still up six nothing. There was two outs, bases loaded, and my my right fielder drops a foul fly ball. Oh my God. In the fifth inning, with two out spaces loaded, uh, we lost eighteen six. Oh, jeez! <laughs> well, they were that powerful. They had they now, had that so score. I, the last the last pitcher I put in, his name was Ivan Torres. He was a redheaded Spanish kid, and uh, I mean, you know, and when you went up there, the ballpark was full. Yep, of fans. absolutely. You, know, you went up there in those years. The ballpark was packed, and it was great. It was a stadium. It was packed. It was mm. stadium. And well, because they were the they, they were the they were the number one team in the state, and uh, they were rolling. They were absolutely rolling. So, they, and they, everybody came out to watch them. They were incredible. My my my, my last pitcher, you know, he was he was just somebody to get get a couple of outs, but he was getting pounded, and uh, the fans all got up and sang, "It's Howdy Duty time." Oh, you're kidding! He was a redheaded, freckle-faced kid. And uh, they all sang Howdy Doody Time. So 
um, that that was not forgotten. So so now 1989, we um, we now I got Danny Ortiz, I got um, um, Andy Martinez, and you know Andy Martinez ends up winning county championship in '89. I got whoever, I got Carmen, I got. I got eight pitches. Yep. Okay. The game before we go up to Memorial, the game before we go up to Memorial, I talked to the team. I said, all right, guys, we're going up to Memorial tomorrow. And, and, and they were all foaming. And I said, and you're not pitching, you're not pitching, you're not pitching. The same kid, the same redheaded kid. Ivan Torres. Ivan Torres. He's, I said, you're pitching tomorrow. And when we beat them, now uh, Hoboken hadn't beaten them in in a, a, a decade. You know, okay. I mean Hoboken had never beat them. Uh, Carmen didn't beat them for years. You know, and they had, we hadn't beaten them at least ten years. And I said, "You're pitching." And when we win this game, we're gonna sing "Howdy Doody" time. <laughs> we beat them ten nothing. Wow. Uh, Chipper Chipper Benway. Uh, had a uh, he used to do a, sla- a nice slash fake fake bunt slash and swing. Yep. Uh, check, uh, a check. Uh, 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 what uh, they call the butcher boy. It's called bunt bunt and slash. Yeah. You show bunt and slash hit a home run over the left field fence. Wow. And we did that. We and we sang howdy duty time. Yeah. So you know they beat us the next game. You know so but um, you know in '89 we ended and we had to win playing a playoff game. We were losing four nothing to them. In a playoff game, Danny started. Danny was only a sophomore. He was he wasn't a mature person who who was very kind. He didn't have a lot of confidence. He also and didn't have, have a lot of control either. But that's besides yeah, the point. Yeah. Oh, so God. I had it. I took him out, and it we were down four nothing. I took him out after like fourth inning, and I put in Andy Martinez. And now Andy keeps them at bay. We're down four nothing. Um, now uh, you know it's like four to two now, and and. Um, I tell Danny that uh, if if we if we take the lead because we always felt we were going to take the lead if we take the lead you're going to pitch the bottom of the ninth bottom of the seventh bottom of the seventh yeah and he said no I'm not I said don't worry about that so so we ended up taking a five four lead against against Memorial in the playoffs in the playoffs yeah after being down four nothing yeah after after your number one pitcher. Well, he really wasn't number one there, but potential wise, that was the only game my father ever went to. Oh, was that true? Really? Okay. My, my father was very sick. He went to the game. It was a very cold, cold day, and he went and he left before the game even started because he was, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't handle the weather. He ended up dying that June. Oh my God! Really? Wow. Yeah. But he went to, you know, he went to that game. So now we're up, we're up five four. And um, now, <laughs> Andy, and, you know, the first batter is a righty, he gets on. The next three batters are lefties. So I go out to the mound, and I, and I call Danny. When he was in right field, when I put him in right field, he made a game-saving catch to keep it for nothing. What a play. Down the, left field, down the right field line, he made a diving catch. Okay. So now, when <laughs> I go out to the mound, and I, and I call Danny, and Danny's standing in right field shaking his head. No. No? No? <laughs> So I start yelling at him. I said, "Get in here!" And and, and uh, he said, "No, again." I said, "You don't want me to go out there. Yeah, this is a high, this is a high school, you know, championship game here." Yeah. And he ends up coming in. He says, "Coach, I can't do it. I can't do it." I said, "Danny, I'm a lefty. You're a lefty. They're lefties. Get them out." And I Throw said, the hook. Throw the hook. Yeah. yeah and, he, yeah. and, he, and, he, and he won the game. Yeah. You know? And Andy, our next game was the county championship. Andy Martinez beat beat. Uh, uh, St. Anthony's nine nothing in the county championship game. Right, I remember that day well too. Yeah. So, so but uh, anyway, but uh, think about it all. Okay, so now you you're you're rolling as a baseball coach. Uh, what year is it now that you become the head basketball coach as well? And when did that? How did that all come about? Two thousand three. Um. Maureen Mandelkin retired after the 2002 season, so uh, um, I put in. Okay. And, um, not many people do. Uh, or I, I was. A, I wasn't surprised. I got. It. I just because I, I, I was coaching freshman in JV and assistant assistant varsity freshman in JV, 
I was coaching all three of those levels. Basketball. For the same amount of time as I coached both sports for 26 years. Wow. Baseball, baseball and basketball. The basketball was, I was spot as assistant. And then when he left, I was um, uh, with, with Maureen. I was freshman or JV coach with, when she was there. She was there about seven years. Right. So, uh, I, so I guess I had the experience at the ba- basketball. That's why I got it before anyone else. Surprised a little bit because usually they didn't give two varsity, two varsity uh, sports to uh, one person. But right. I got it. All right, but how difficult was it for you to be able to juggle both sports as being a head coach? How tough was that? The most, the most difficult time was right at the end of the basketball season, the beginning of the baseball season, uh, when um, when you know they they meshed into each other. Right. And and, and the, f- the further you went in basketball, the, the longer you played. Usually, the baseball season started the first weekend in uh, in March, and if you were in a state tournament, you were you were also playing basketball games in March. And we were in a state tournament almost every year. Just about every year in yeah. basketball, yeah, yeah. In fact, basketball, they they made a lower division for a division for Group One teams. Us, St. Mary's, St. Joe's, St. Al's. Right, the uh, Seglio Division. Right, Seglio Division. We 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 had a sixty game winning streak within our division. Yeah. Throughout the, throughout, uh, and we and we we won five five division championships. There. Right. Yeah. yeah, it was a. It was it was a it was a tremendous it was a tremendous run, you know. Okay. And, and then in and then in the two thousand like two thousand three two thousand four the baseball program got a resurgence and you started to do well again. You started to you know you I, I think you went to the county the state state finals what twice in that run two thousand. Yes, uh, we. Uh we won the county champion. Won the county championship in uh, 2005. No, six, seven, and eight. We won. We won our division, and then in six and seven, we won the state championship too. Wow! Yeah. All right, and that was just a, another great run, you know. So you, so you had, you had two almost two dominant runs. You had uh, the the late 80s, early 90s. And then you had the beginning of the 2000 decade, and you know, and you put it all together. You know, how many years did you coach uh, the best the baseball team? How many years? Thirty. Twenty twenty six years both sports. Twenty six years both sports, but as the head varsity coach, twenty six years baseball, and how many basketball? Um, eight. Eight. Okay, and you won uh, over five hundred games as a baseball coach, correct? Yeah. Okay. No. No. Four fifty nine. Four fifty nine as a baseball coach. Four fifty nine and um, two thirty four. Okay, and then basketball, you won over a hundred games, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. What was the first one that you decided to give up? And I guess it was was it was basketball was the first one you decided to give up. The only reason why uh, it was the first one is because it ended first. Okay. Uh, because I retired in two thousand eleven. Okay. So that's when that's when I stopped coaching both sports. Both sports. Okay, yeah. but also you had you are like the bionic man. I mean, you've had you know like Steve Austin didn't have the same type of bionic stuff that you have. You had what two hips and two knees? Uh, two hips, two knees, and two shoulder replacements. Wow. And so you are you are bionic. Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. You know what, too? You know, we, we, we won more, one more county championship in 2011. Okay, that's right. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I attribute that to the FA. Why is that? Absolutely attribute it to the FA. Oh, because he, cause he passed because away. The FA passed away in April. And you had that, that phantom pop-up against uh, against St. Peter's Prep. And the, uh, well, well, the FA passed away in April. Two, two of the pole bearers. Were, were my players. Oh, is that true? Really? Yes. And in his, in his funeral, two of the ball pole ball players, um, uh, Houghton, Ryan Houghton. Ryan Houghton, that's right. And Duke McCourt. And Duke McCourt, okay, both of them, right, okay. Both of them are very close. Ryan was very, very close to the ball. Yeah. So, um, we, we, I mean, it was, and I was, you know, I didn't announce my retirement, but 
the players knew I was. And Duke, Duke was a big leader back then. And uh, I didn't announce it. I kept it. You know, they kept. And you know what? They did. They hardly even asked if I was retired because because they knew. But I never talked about retirement. And uh, and so um, as the, the the season ends, we're ten and ten. You know. You know the season ends ten and ten, and now we have to go to county play to this county playoffs and the uh, state tournament. But I had uh, I had a, I had an ace up my sleeve. I had uh, Kenny Rhoda. Yes, um, indeed. But he was only a sophomore then, now wasn't he? He was a, he was a junior. A then. junior, okay. Yeah. So I had Kenny Rhoda, and I had Abe Grooms. So there were a couple aces up my sleeve. In fact, when we when we sat through the uh, the uh, County, the county uh, tournament uh, seedings. Um, I'm sitting there, and uh, and uh, you know, I don't know, but who knew? We were ten and ten, so who knew you're going to do anything after that? Right. So uh, we were sitting there, and I said, "Well, Memorial beat us; they could be number four seed, and uh, and then Carney beat us; they could be number. Uh, we'll be number. We'll, we'll be number six seed." And uh, they're all looking at me. Because okay. you know, because everyone usually fights to get up to the highest seat because right. you have an extra bowl game and everything. Right. And I, you know, I'm saying, you know, it, it, it is going to be what it is. You know, who knew, You know, who knows what's going to happen? So, what's the sense of fighting over? I don't feel like fighting over it this year. You know. And then a couple, a couple of coaches say, "You son of a bitch." <laughs> I said, no. He said, "You got Rhoda, so you don't care where you play." I said, well, well, I had Rhoda all year. I'm 10 and 10. (laughs) And he says, yeah, but you can pitch Rhoda. Well, I'll I'll see what I'm going to do, okay? I'll see what I'm going to do. So so we we just rotate Rhoda and Abe Brooms. Um, you know, every game. For all the uh, county playoff games, yeah. Yeah, yeah, county and states. Oh, okay. County and the states. You know, eight grooms kept on winning in the states. Rhoda kept on winning in the county. And, uh, it was, it was a, what a run. We beat Memorial two to one up there. And, um, Kenny Rhoda made one of the best plays I ever saw a pitcher make. Yep. And there was a runner on. There was a runner on second base. One out, and and it was a little slow roll to third, uh, in between third. Third and, and short, and he and went and instead of wielding and throwing to first, he threw the guy out at third base. I don't know how he did it, but he was. That was a great play, right? We always had, we always had, I mean, Memorial beat us twice during the regular season. Well, they beat us. We, you, you can't win up there. It's a sand trap. You can't right. Run. Can't, can't run. Can't do anything. Run. So except if, except for Kenny liked pitching on that mound. He loved yeah. it. Loved it. I never saw a mound. He didn't like the pitch. That's true. That's true. So, so Kenny had the best control I've ever seen. Ever. Then, then we go to Bayonne, and uh, and uh, it was contentious from the start. Yep. Phil, Phil Baccarella does his magic. Uh, there was a there was a, a one of our kids was scoring, and as soon as he passed third base, Phil's yelling, "Mister, Mister, Mister!" Yep, I remember. And he didn't miss third. No. After the game, Phil said he didn't miss third, but I he said I got that call a few times, and they called him out because yep. he missed third base. So um, with that, and it was uh, there was an umpire there from Bergen County. Who you know? I hate when they did that. In the, in the we had all Hudson County umpires all year. All year, and then you get two guys, guys that don't know anybody, right? And that was a time when they had to check the bats. Yeah. <laughs> so he threw he threw Phil Baccarella's bat out, and then he comes over to me, and Phil comes over with him to me, and, and Phil's looking at my bats with him, and he said, "That's the same bat I had. You two are mine out." And he said, "No, it isn't." And, it, and I guess it was. And Phil gets you know, Phil, yeah, that was the same. Yeah, he didn't throw money out. He threw his out. So, so everything was, you know, contentious the whole time. And then next thing you know, Phil Backwell Jr., PJ, his, his son, right. gets thrown out. He gets thrown out for yelling at the umpire. So he got thrown out. Um, Danny um, Rota won that game two to one again. Yeah. I mean, even even though we got that run, and then so. Unbelievably, after the game, I'm sitting in Piccolo's in Hoboken. And, and you were, and at that point, you had one of your hip problems. You were struggling bad, having a tough time walking, right? The, the plan in November 
was to have my surgery in February because uh, I couldn't walk. Yeah. And then when, when, when I couldn't, I said, I, I would go home to Janice. I can't walk. I can't even walk. I have to hold on to the fence. Yeah. Janice didn't want to use a cane. So I'm not using no cane. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I went to my doctor and, and in November, and we, I was going to have the, the, the surgery in February because yeah, these teams weren't, yeah, the basketball, basketball wasn't that good. Yeah. And baseball wasn't projected to be that good. So I was going to have it in February and I'll be back by baseball. Um, and then um, I, when, when I went to the doctor, he said, why don't you use a cane? And I said, good idea. So I used a cane. <laughs> So I so I used a cane and 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 I bought a stool with me to every game. That's right. Yep. Basketball and and the baseball games. I I sat on a stool and I used a cane and I felt good good running. I was disciplinarian of the school, so I was running around the school all day long. But I felt good. Yeah, don't, don't let's use that term loosely. Running around the school? No, I don't think so. No. Yeah, that's why right. I couldn't run because yeah. I was because uh, you couldn't barely walk because I wasn't a good runner. No, you couldn't walk. Barely, you were struggling bad with that hip that year, really bad. But I, I kept on moving around the school, and so uh, because the cane made me feel a lot better, I canceled the uh, surgery, and I, 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 I canceled it till the end of the school year. And, and one of my basketball players said, Coach Matt. You, you're going to be around for the whole season, right? It's, yeah, yeah, all right. I'll be around for the whole season. So, so you know. And then we go into the we go into the counties and the states. Between the counties and the states, we went seven and one. Yep. We was we were ten and ten between the counties and the states. We were seven and one. Now the the county championship game, we were losing to North Bergen two nothing the whole game. We were being no hit. And losing to nothing. Yep. In the top of the seventh inning, I was saying to my to, to Bruce, I just want to hit. I don't want to. I don't want to go out this you know this year you know, in the last game in the county without without a hit. I, we just wanted a hit. Right. Well, and who was pitching for North Bergen? Was it Emil Fuda? Huh? Who was pitching for North Bergen? Emil Fuda, right? No, it was a lefty. Started with a C. His last name started with a C. Cam Cameo, something like that. No, okay. So it was a lefty. But what happened was the first batter, and I and it, uh, Andres Flores hits a line drive to center field. And, oh. and I asked Andres, and um, I asked, I, I saw him at a uh, at, at a function about four years, five years later, and I asked him, when you hit that ball, did you think it was going to go over the center fielder's head? He said, Coach, no way. Yeah, right. Okay. So he hits a fly ball to center. The center field was standing there, and the wind took it, and it blew over his head for a double. Okay. okay. Next batter makes out. The third batter hits a foul fly ball. This is the infamous. This is the famous fly ball. Right. The, the, the next batter hits a foul fly ball. That's going. That's going to go over the dugout in, on first base side. Right. But of course, it was a cave in point. So the ball starts blowing. The first baseman calls for it too soon because the ball started out near first base. Yep. Oh, yeah. The ball ended, ended up, up like three feet away from the pitcher's mound. Nope. The ball ended up landing right in front of home plate. Oh, that's right. It landed right in front of home plate. Right. In, plop. In the mud. In the mud. It went plop. Normally, normally it would have a backspin on it. It would have rolled back. It went plop. It right in the mud. In the mud. Yep. Right in front of home plate. Come on. The father's out there pushing his ball around. Okay. Okay. Um, then, then, uh, it was, uh, but what was great was our runner on second didn't panic and run to third because the catcher could pick the ball up right away and he would have thrown him out of third. He stayed in second. Our runner stayed in second. Now it's first and second. The, um, my, my next batter is a big lumbering first baseman and, um, uh, you know, they, they're playing first base without holding him on, and he hits a ground ball at first. The first baseman on North Bergen throws to second. He throws to second. It, 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 it's a double play. This game is over. Okay. Because, because that first base, my first baseman's not going to get, you know, to first base. He throws the ball in the dirt. Now the, now the bases are loaded because the, the, the shortstop couldn't pick the ball up. Now the bases are loaded. Um, now my number eight and nine hitters are up. Um, Danny, Danny Grassi batting, batting 180 something. And, um, uh, 
Connor Milne batting 170 something. I had nothing <laughs> on the bench. I had nothing on the bench. All right. And now, but now there's two outs with all this because right. there's nothing. There's nothing and you're still down a run. We're down two runs. Oh, down two runs. Okay. Nothing. Bases loaded, two outs with my with my worst two hitters up. Um, Danny Danny Grassi walks. Right. Two to one. Okay. Connor Milne was was one of the best squeeze bunters we ever had, but with two outs you can't squeeze. So he walks. It's two two. Two two. Now the the runner on third was my pitch runner for my first baseman, and uh, Ryan Ryan Houghton is up. He's he's my leadoff hitter, and I said, look anything anything in the dirt, you you you, you go anything in the dirt. They have, they they change pitches. And the first pitch he threw to Ryan Houghton was in the dirt. Go slide the catcher and run. he scored a run. And that's yeah. how you won the county. Right. I remember well. And, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the bottom of the seventh, um, the Abe's still pitching. Abe pitches this game. And he gives up, and he gives up a lead off double. Uh, no, actually, it was a ground ball to short. And he did a, a, a wild throw to first. So it was a runner on second, no outs. I go out to the mound and tell, uh, and tell Abe, Abe, don't worry about it. We're going to win this game anyway. Just get these next three guys out and we'll go home. Because I, I knew there was there was something going on in this in this ballpark we were going to lose this game. <laughs> I just knew it. And that's what happened. So, in fact, after the game, I apologized to the North Burton coach. I didn't even, like, say, I, I said, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I don't know how we did it. I, I actually literally apologized to him because... You know, it was it was one of the most outstanding, outrageous things I've ever seen as a coach. Right. And incredibly, that was your last county championship, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the last county championship. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you decide to retire, and at that point, you probably thought that was it, right? You thought that that was it, that was it. You're going to enjoy retirement. You had a shore house, and uh, although uh, the shore house was already destroyed by then, right? By Hurricane Sandy. When was when did Sandy hit? Uh, October 31st, 2012, 2011. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, oh, so it was on its way. And incredibly, um, explain to everybody your sure house didn't get flooded like everybody else's. For some reason, yours caught fire, and the uh, the fire trucks couldn't get to the house because of the floods and everything. And you and your house burned to the ground. With all your memorabilia and jackets and and scrapbooks and what have you, you lost a lot in that fire, didn't you? Not my scrapbooks. I still got my scrapbooks. Oh, okay. But I lost my all my championship jackets uh, from the nineties and the, and uh, when when the season ended, I was uh, when when I retired, I, I brought a lot of stuff down because I kept a lot of stuff in the high school. So when I retired, I brought a lot of stuff down and put it in the attic, and you know I was gonna. I had a bunch of game films for uh, uh, basketball and stuff. I was going to do some, you know, try to put, try to do something with that. But, uh, but yeah, the house burned down because uh, the uh, storm blew uh, across the street from us. The, the storm blew a house, the houses off their foundation and it ignited gas, uh, gas fires and it, and it came across the street and uh, devoured our house too. But, uh, but you know, those were the breaks. So, uh, you know, I, I, I still have my scrapbooks. Though. All right. Thank, thank God for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, but then uh, at that point, you probably thought, okay, that's it. It's over. How in the world does St. Anthony's come into the mix? My my principal from in Hoboken High School became the principal of uh, St. Anthony's, Charlie Tortorella. Um, I went to uh, uh, the state uh, finals game against Plainfield, uh, just to see uh, to, to see St. Anthony's play in 2012, and they beat Plainfield. I went to that, and I uh, but I also went there to talk to Charlie, see if he you know had any kind of like coaching things available, you know. And um, he ended up calling me uh, November of the year, uh, the of the year following year for to coach girls basketball, and um, I coached girls basketball there in 2013, and. Um, 2012 and 2013, I coached girls basketball, and then he ended up asking me if I wanted to be athletic director, and I was athletic director there from 2014 to 2017. Until the, until the place closed, right? Until the place closed, yeah. Okay. 
All right, so all in all, buddy, you got to realize that you had such a great run as being uh, a, a coach in two sports, athletic director at the premier. Uh, you, you, I mean, they, you wanted you, St. Anthony's won a TSC one of the years that you were the AD. Um, you just had a great, a great run, all having to do with sports over 30 years. And how fortunate do you feel that you were to be able to be part of it um, at both Hoboken and at St. Anthony's? And I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the face of the earth, although I'm not dying. But Thank God. Yeah. You know? So uh, it's um, it was uh, – and, and being there with St. Anthony's, being having the opportunity to be around Bob Hurley for those five years was uh, – uh, was you know we we still talk every once in a while, but it was one of the, the greatest experiences outside of Hoboken that I've ever had in my entire life. And and I've met new friends there. We still uh, fans that we used to always go to games. We still go out and hang out every once in a while. It's a uh, it's uh, an extraordinary uh, life experience, and um, I wouldn't have given it up for anything. In fact, you know, like I was I was telling people. When I was coaching and being successful and everything, I had I had my friends coming up to me and say and say this. They were so jealous of me. Meanwhile, they they jumped back in their Ferraris and everything. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's people at the stock exchange. They were they were making they were making millions of dollars, and they were jealous of what I was doing. You know, and uh, they they and many of them couldn't have been teachers because they would have killed the kids if they were teaching. But it was. Uh, we, we, money, money wasn't the object. It was, it was always being able to be around young people, and young people kept can keep you young. Okay. You know, if you appreciate them, they keep you young. You know, there were there were some teachers in, in high school where I would say, "Would you treat your kid this way?" And uh, that's that's not my kid. That was their answer. Not you know, yeah. you know. But, so there, there were some miserable teachers, and there were a lot of great teachers. But if you if you just if you just if you just uh, stay with them, hang out with them. Um, uh, if if you respect them, if you have a good time with them, they keep the young. Okay. In fact, I'm looking at the 1992 yearbook. Um, I saved all the yearbooks. Okay. And, uh, from, from 87, when I, you know, I my graduation year is 72. I have that. I have 74. That's Janice's yearbook. Uh, but uh, I have from 87 to, to uh, 2011. I didn't get 2011. That burned down. I have to get another copy of that. But and, and I had kids sign the yearbook. Joey Anderson in 92, graduated 92. He says you were like a father to me. Um, I'm looking at my yearbooks now, I'm, and uh, and, um, I'm, and I, I started with 2010. I'm down to 92. Okay. Because, because the memories of of being a teacher and and affecting lives and and, uh, and nurturing the kids uh, are are incredible. So it was, uh, you know, uh, I I was I was I was in the horrors when I retired because it was I had nothing to do. And thank God I found St. Anthony's because I don't know what it would have done. But it was it was a tremendous, tremendous experience being at the high school. The, the kids are a little bit older, but they're not they're not the most mature. And it was it was always great having a good time with them. So and then the, before we before we sign off, you got to give credit to the person who's been with you every step of the way over the last thirty some odd years. And how much, uh, how much did it, does it help you that you had uh, your wife Janice with you every single step of the way? And how great of a, how great of a wife was she for you? Um, I would not have been able to do all this stuff if, if it wasn't for Janice. In fact, rather than, rather than tell me that you know it's time to stop or whatever, she became my scorekeeper in basketball. You know. And, uh, you know, just uh, she she was my, you know, she was my number one fan in baseball. Um, she she was the reason why I was able to continue coaching because she allowed me to do what I needed to do. And uh, and she she backed me all the way. But she was not only backed me, she was a part of it all the way. And, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, really fortunate to have to have someone like her 
as, as my mate for the last 34 years because um, I don't think this would have worked out if it was anybody else. And you never had a fight. 34 years, never had a fight. That's pretty amazing, right? <laughs> All right, now you're still involved in athletics, although you've retired. Talk a little bit about uh, the Hoboken Demarest uh, Athletic Hall of Fame that you are uh, still the chairperson of and that you were the forefather with Dennis Savannah way back when, but now you've taken the full reins. And how much of a kick do you get out of the fact that uh, you're still involved with the Hoboken Hall of Fame? year with uh, John Madigan's induction. That's correct. Uh, and um, I invite you every year, and I'm so I'm glad John got inducted. You finally came. Yeah, but I was not in Myrtle Beach. That's usually when I'm in Myrtle, and now last year I wasn't in Myrtle. So, you know, that's the, I can't, I wouldn't be able to go to that dinner when I'm in Myrtle. See, too bad you didn't have the dinner this year. I'd be there, because there's no Myrtle, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, um, it, uh, have you put off the dinner until October, or you just canceled it all together this year? No, no, it's uh, it's still tentatively scheduled for October 10th. October 10th, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Wilson County one is October 1st, so I, wow. don't, know, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, if, if, if that gets canceled, we'll probably do it in January or February. All right, well, October 10th this year, I will be glad to be there. And you said, Danny Ortiz, who else is going in in this year's class for the Hoboken Hall of Fame? Tagliere's going in. Wow. Okay. And um, see, Louis called me. I didn't real. I, you know, I didn't realize he was going, and he called me asking when it went out. My mine was my uh, Hall of Fame. And um, Angela Zampella is going in. Wow. Angela Zampella is going in as what? Uh, basketball. I mean basketball. Uh, well, you know, well what achieve, you special mean, achievement. Special achievement. Little league too. Great little league. Great little league, but a special achievement. She was. She was. She was a, a professional basketball. I know that, but she didn't graduate from Hoboken High School, so I mean, so she gets this what the special achievement award? No, 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 no. This is uh, this is the Hudson County one. You said Danny's going in, right? Yeah, Danny's going in the Hudson County. Oh, Hudson County Hall of Fame. I'm going. I'm Hudson who's County. going in yours? Oh, uh, in ours. Uh, let's see, Joey Anderson. Okay. Going in. Uh, actually, and this this thing is the um um uh, the. Uh, ambassador, we, we made up a new award, the Ambassador Award. We were honoring Ricky LeBrink, uh, Billy Cohane. And oh, Billy nice. Cohane. Yeah, so they're, they're going in. Okay. Um, oh, boy, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm to, uh, let's see, so basketball, football. Football is... Um, I'm, 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 I'm drawing, drawing a blank. Okay, no problem. But you're saying that Angela Zampella, who is going to be uh, a guest on the on the Hudson County Sports Podcast, or, uh, before you will. So I mean, she she her her, her uh, appearance will be uh, probably next week before you get uh, your chance to get on because I've already it's already been taped. Um, so, and, uh, maybe Danny Ortiz will be on in the future. I'd be glad to talk to Danny. As a matter of fact, I think I even dropped the word to Danny and said, would you like to be a guest? So, you yeah, know. That's interesting because he's not, he's, you know, he, he's not a, he's not a talker. No, know? no, no. So it'll be, well, if I got, if I got an hour out of Keon Walker, I can get an hour out of Danny Ortiz. <laughs> So I could do it. Keon, in high school, Keon said about five words. It tops. Yeah. How about it? So I, I, we even made a laugh that that it took him four years to correct me that I was spelling his name wrong in the paper. <laughs> I thought it was always K E O N, and it's K E E O N, and he didn't tell me yeah. until until it was like you know, by the you know like after he had that big game against Pasek Valley, he said, "By the way, mistake, you know, you spell my name wrong." I said, "What is it? I can spell Walker." He goes, "No, no, no, my first name." He didn't tell me. <laughs> So anyway, buddy, this has been an absolute joy having you, you know, we were supposed to be an hour, it's now an hour and a half, but I really appreciate you taking the time to give me, uh, give me some time to talk about your great, great career, and it's certainly been a great career, and how do I know how great of a career it is? Because you, you that's you right, right, yeah, every single step of the way, I came into the Hudson Dispatch when you got hired um, at, at Hoboken, we were, our careers paralleled. Uh, right straight parallel all the way through. 
And uh, I can I can't you know thirty some odd years of talking to each other. I can't imagine ever once that we ever had bad words. And if we did, it didn't last long. So I appreciate your I appreciate your friendship. And there's not many people I say friendships, but you are friends. You know, you know what's amazing when I look at my scrapbooks and all the articles that the Far wrote that 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 you wrote. Spe- I mean, you especially. I mean. The, yeah, I, I, you probably, you obviously don't remember all the articles you wrote. No, the, no, no way, no way. Now, you know, now you can't even, you can't even open a paper and see a score. Not, I mean, not literally now because you can't see any scores. Right. And, and everything is, everything is on, on, you know, internet and everything. But, um, my scrap, I have, I have 12 scrapbooks because, because of people like you who did a, an unbelievable job of, of, writing about the team, an individual, writing about all these different things, and, uh, and uh, you know, those those things will be with me. And I, I look at them, like, once every other year, and uh, I, I, I'm i amazed by all this. In fact, you actually won an award by pitching, by writing something about me, right? Uh, yes, I did. You are correct. I won the... Uh, is that the buddy system? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I won the uh, won I won the North Jersey, Jersey Press Club award because I wrote about the, I wrote an article about you. Yeah, see. So it was it was, a, it was a phenomenal run, and it was it was it was it's really great having you as a friend because here you are, you know, with was still still talking sports, and here you are still talking about me. So it's, that's uh, right. Thank but, you. Very but this much. will be the last time ever in history. I won't I won't talk about you ever again. And especially, I won't talk to you about about you ever again if if the baseball season ever starts, because um, we all know that you're a Yankee fan, and um, I root for the better team. So, <laughs> all right, I'll see you. I'll I'll see you when everything clears out with Grinelli and uh, in the in the restaurant someplace. Absolutely, we, we we will definitely get together. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, buddy. Thank you very much, Jim. All right, pal. Be well. Bye bye. And that was my guest. Uh, this week uh, was Buddy, Buddy Matthews from Hoboken and St. Anthony. And I just want to give a special thanks to my executive producer, Johnny Haig, my great nephew, who this the podcast would not have ever taken place without him and his guidance uh, throughout it. So I'm Jim Haig, and this, this has been the latest edition of the Hudson County Sports Podcast. We'll have another one next week. Please tune in on Facebook. YouTube and Twitter. Thanks so very much for listening. Have a great day. Take care now.